Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to look at the Smith & Wesson M&P 10. It's my M&P 10. It's the newest addition to my collection. Um, I've done a few mods to it that I'm going to go into depth discussing in this video. When I was looking for a semi-automatic 308 rifle, I wanted something that I knew would be accurate out of the box and would be fairly lightweight given the round that it's going to be firing. So I settled on the M&P 10. I knew going into it that the big drawback for me would be that it is not free floated from the factory. Um, I don't know how big of a deal that is. I didn't really want to find out. Um, with the cost of ammo and more to the point, the cost of my time to go out to the range, just to be disappointed by point of aim shift, um, I'm sorry, point of impact shift uh, from you know bracing the, the fore end of the gun, I knew right off the bat that I wanted to free float it. Now this weapon from Smith & Wesson in the factory configuration, according to their website, I just looked it up, it's stated as weighing just over eight pounds, uh, 8.1 pounds, I believe. Now, when I weighed this, uh, I weighed each individual component before I went to town modifying it, I found that uh, Smith & Wesson was actually erring on the side of caution there. My M&P 10 from the factory, um, all in, no magazine, weighed 7.78 pounds, something like that. So it's a sub eight pound, 18 inch 308 uh, semi-automatic rifle. I think that's pretty awesome. But as I said, I wanted to free float it. So I started looking into my options. So let's go um, into the details. Each individual component I changed because Believe it or not, this rifle, as you see it right here, with that big metal uh, free float rail on front, is actually lighter. It is slightly lighter than it was when it left the Smith & Wesson factory. Have my handy dandy food scale here when I'm not using it uh, to sell drugs. That was a, a joke, by the way. Highly recommend getting one of these, especially if you're just starting out your collection. Um, weigh everything. This should come as no surprise. This is a channel led by two accountants, but I weigh every component. I have a spreadsheet going. So I'll take the magazine out. Uh, none of the stated weights online are with the magazine. It is clear, by the way, in case anyone cares. All right, so it's set to uh, ounces. Give it a fresh start. So seven pounds, 12 ounces um, for the gun in its entirety. Uh, seven and three quarters of a pound, uh, that's a little bit less, ever so slightly less than it was in the factory configuration. So let's get into the details. Let's start with the bad news. So in looking at rails, to be honest, I didn't think I would be able to achieve my goal with this rifle. I thought putting a long metal free float uh, rail on it um, in exchange for this very light um, plastic handguard from the factory. You can tell there's not even any heat sheeting in there. It's just plastic. I thought for sure I would take a hit on weight. I thought maybe I would get close to the factory weight and call it good. Um, so that's the bad news here. The handguard itself relative to these handguards, you gain like five ounces. So you have to make that up. But there is some weight to be found at the front of the gun. So the barrel nut and delta ring from the factory uh, that's pretty much a wash uh, with the Odin Works. I'm sorry I didn't mention that before. So the rail I went with is the Odin Works 15.5 uh, inch uh, DPMS low profile M-Lock rail. That's a mouthful. Um, the Odin Works barrel nut and adapter are roughly the same weight as the factory barrel nut and delta ring. So that's a wash. The handguard, like I said, is uh, quite a bit heavier, rough, roughly twice the weight of the factory handguards. One more note about the handguard, um, the Odin Works. 
I went with MLOC and I went with the 15.5 inch one for the DPM DPMS low profile. Uh, they also make Keymod and they also make both either Keymod or MLOC in 12.5 inch. Um, I wanted the extra sight radius and to be able to get my bipod way out there. Um, I went with MLOC because at this point I think it's objectively better now that uh, Naval Special Warfare have, has said that it's better. So uh, who am I to argue? But if anybody is looking for the lightest of the light um, DPMS low profile rails, I think this one's pretty light already. But when you check the box, it comes in from Odin. They state the weights of the different ones right there. And interestingly enough, Keymod is like an ounce lighter. Um, and then if you're willing to give up uh, those three inches on the end of the gun, I know I'm not willing to give up three inches, but you could shave like 2.5 ounces, just something to consider. Uh, I'm gonna stick with this one. Uh, since the gun overall is still lighter than it was from the factory, I'll live with it. Um, I gotta tell you guys, if it was heavier than factory and I saw what was on that box, it would be keeping me up at night. When we get to the gas block, this is the gas block you get from Smith & Wesson. It's this thing, this big hunk of steel because it has the uh, extra metal up top to get you to the correct height for a front sight and also the sling swivel. So this thing's like four ounces and I replaced it. Uh, it's gonna be hard to see under the handguard there but I replaced it with a Wojtek low profile adjustable gas block. That's the uh, 0.750 diameter one. Um, that weighs, I think, close to three ounces less. So right there you have three ounces compared to the factory gas block. You also lose this at the front of the factory handguard. You lose this retaining ring, I don't know. Um, I mentioned taking notes before as a joke. Uh, I am gonna post a image at the end of this video, a spreadsheet, surprise, surprise, um, where I break down the exact weight differences of this build if anybody is interested in putting together something like this themselves. So uh, don't sweat it too much. Um, there are gonna be details at the end of the video. One other thing regarding the gas block, Wojtek is in fact the correct pronunciation for that part. Uh, Wojtek, the soldier bear. Um, I'm kind of an authority on this since I am a professional Polish person. But fast shipping, uh, the gas block is definitely quality and it was only $29 shipped to my door. I think that's hard to beat for a nice low profile adjustable gas block so couldn't highly recommend that enough. Uh, moving on to the front of the, the very front of the M&P 10. Our more astute viewers may be able to recognize this as the same muzzle brake that I have in the Precision. It's not physically the same one, but this is the Precision Armament M472 muzzle brake. It's not light by any means. It's not like a 308 birdcage. Um, but when you compare it to this giant flash hider that for whatever reason Smith & Wesson puts on the end of these things from the factory, I mean, it looks mean, but this thing is heavy. So. Uh, I lost an ounce from the front of the gun by going to the Precision M472. Um, it is a very effective muzzle brake. Uh, we have a video showing the slow motion muzzle blast. Maybe I'll link to that somewhere. Um, it is very effective. If you look up the truth about guns, uh, they did several reviews, I think at this point, several comparisons testing dozens uh, of muzzle brakes on both 5.56 and 7.62 rifles. I don't think anything ever beat this one. Um, the exchange for that is there's quite a bit of blast from the sides. Um, I'm not just talking sound. You can feel this thing when you're next to it. Um, but I guess that's the bricks. So moving to the back of the gun, uh, it's all good news weight wise back here. Um, factory grip. I have the Magpul MOE. This is my grip of choice. Uh, they're crazy cheap online. I mean, you can find them for like $15, very comfortable to me. Um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Um, so this is actually a bit lighter, even with the uh, door, it's a bit lighter than this. Um, check the spreadsheet at the end, I don't remember exactly how much. The buttstock, uh, this is factory, of course, regular A2 style from Smith & Wesson, replaced with a, another favorite of mine, the um, Battle Link. Um, I think it's Mission First Tactical, the minimalist stock. Um, so everybody knows it as. 
A big fan of this thing. I have it on all of my rifles. Again, you can get them very cheap, like $30 if you shop smart. And this thing is definitely lighter than the A2 buttstock as well, as well as more comfortable. It's got this rubber butt pad. Um, I actually like these swells here on the cheek. I think it helps me get a pretty consistent cheek weld. It's not the best stock to use with a rear bag. Um, I know that's a consideration. I'm gonna be using this as like a DMR type rifle. So maybe I'll change it in the future, but for now I had an extra one and it kind of goes with the lightweight theme. Um, one other thing, this may come as a surprise. Here we have the standard charging handle. Um, you know, nothing fancy there. I replaced it with the BCM Bravo Company USA Gunfighter Mod 4 with this bigger latch. Believe it or not, A, two things about this. A, this is also lighter slightly lighter than the factory charging handle, even with this big latch, so that's cool. The other good thing, and I was very happy when I saw this, the box from BCM for this charging handle specifically says that it will not work on the M&P 10. If you look it up online, guys talk about modding their gunfighters, um, filing off some lip and some material from the inside of the gun to make it fit. Mine fit, no problem. It actually doesn't have that extra material on the charging handle that guys talk about filing off. Maybe BCM realized that they could get rid of that and have it work with another rifle. Um, all I know is I'm a happy camper. So between those three things, the grip, the stock, the charging handle, that is weight loss at the rear of the rifle, um, and all in, that's all the changes I made um, that are relevant to weight. All in, as I said in the beginning of the, of the video, this M&P 10 is now free floated with a 15 and a half inch fore end with a little Picatinny rail section right there. And it is lighter than the factory M&P 10. So I am very happy about that. Um, of course, it has no optics at the moment. I am gonna remedy that soon. So that's it, that's my M&P 10. Uh, I have shot it, but not much. That's all coming. We will have more content about this rifle. Uh, we will see how it stacks up to the Ruger Precision, both, um, both 308 rifles. So let's see if this thing, which is substantially lighter and semi-automatic, let's see if it can stand up to the precision and all out accuracy. Um, but stay tuned guys, uh, we appreciate the views, we appreciate any comments, any shares. Um, if you like the spreadsheets and self-deprecating humor, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I promise there will be more of that coming. So stay tuned after the video if you want details on the weights. Um, I'll just post a photo of the spreadsheet I have going. Um, so that's it. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.